What's going on YouTube? It's James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. Today I want to talk to you about JavaScript arrow functions. All right, so I've got a file uh, inside of VS Code here and I've got some notes just for what I want to run through for this video. But what we're talking about are arrow functions, which is a new and concise and easy way to write functions uh, in modern JavaScript and ES6 JavaScript. ES6 JavaScript refers to JavaScript that uh, version that came out in 2005. So that's what we're talking about here. Lots of things change uh, in modern JavaScript. So we're going to talk about arrow functions right now. So let's start by writing a simple function. So function multiply, multiply by two. And it's going to take a parameter called num and it's just going to return num times two. Really, really simple. Hopefully this is pretty straightforward, even for people who are uh, new to JavaScript. So I can call this by passing a parameter and I'm just going to log this out and it should say four. So that's really, really simple. Now this is a regular function definition. You could even um, assign this to a variable like so. So if I said uh, const and then multiply by two is the name of the function and then assign that to an actual function, uh, it'll work the same way here. Now we're just assigning it to a variable. So with the way this is set up, we could change this to now be an arrow function by removing the function keyword like that and then adding in the actual arrow. So this is the stuff that's highlighted right now is the actual arrow function. It defines parameters almost the exact same way. The, then the arrow right here and then the actual body of the function uh, surrounded by these curly brackets just like you would with a regular function definition. But it gets a lot better for several different reasons. One, if you have only one parameter, you can omit the parentheses. So if you have more than one or if you have no parameters, uh, you will have to have the parentheses. If you just have one, you can take them away and do this. Then arrow functions have a way for you to uh, really quickly and easily uh, define what you want to return out of a function. So they have what's called an implicit return. So if you get rid of these angle or the curly brackets, you can bump this line up like so. And then because it's implicit return, you don't need the actual keyword return. You can just do this. So what this function does is it takes in a parameter num and then it returns, this is the implicit return, uh, num times two. So one more recap here, you don't need parentheses if it's just one parameter, if it's zero or more than one, you will need them. Then if you're just returning something out of your function, you don't need to do anything else, it's just a real quick return. You can use the implicit return, not have to define or type out your curly braces and not have to type the return keyword and then just tell it what to return right there. Now these are uh, really useful for something like the map operator. So if we did uh, an array of one, two, three, four, and we wanted to uh, call map, and if you are new to map, you can look at one of my other JavaScript array videos that talks about uh, JavaScript arrays and then one that talks about array functions. So what map does is it allows you to iterate through each number and get, or excuse me, each item of your array, in this case, their number, so I'm gonna call each item num, and then I want to return for each one of those things, the num times two. Notice this looks really similar to, um, to what we have above. So map takes a callback function, which would have looked like this, and it's gonna take property num, and then return num times two. So again, that's what we had with our original function definition. Now we can use arrow syntax, shorten that up a whole lot. And what this does is creates a new array. So it takes the original one, it looks at each item, it does some sort of transformation to it, which is what our uh, arrow function here defines. And then it uh, creates a new array from each of those transformations. So our each of the items being transformed then get put into the new array. So if I log out the new array here, you'll see now you get two, four, six, eight, which is one times two, two times two, three times two, four times two. <laughs> uh, all right, so these arrow functions are really quick for using map. They're also good for other array functions like filter. So if I wanted uh, an array, one, two, three, four, and I called filter, and I only wanted to see 
numbers that are even. I could say num mod two is zero. And call this new array two. And let's get rid of that one. Let's log out this new array two. And this should give us the uh, and a new array with just two and four. Let's save this. All right, so there's our new array with just two and four. And again, we're able to pass in this really concise arrow function because we don't have, or because we only have one parameter, you don't need the parentheses around that parameter. Uh, then you're returning num mod two equals zero. And then the filter function uh, or the filter functionality is just gonna take what we return and decide wh whether or not to put that item in the new array. So array functions can be super, super concise. They work great for array map and filters. There's one thing that you do need to be aware of though, and it's the this context uh, or this scope. And this is something that uh, if you're not, basically uh, this is kind of an intermediate JavaScript thing. So if you're not familiar with this, the keyword this and what that is, this might confuse you a little bit, but let's start by creating a person object. And I've got a video on objects if you need that uh, as a reference material as well. So let's say first is James and then last is quick. And then let's say get name is a function that we then want to print, or I guess we can just return. So return and we can say this dot first and add on some string concatenation and this dot last. So in an object, you can have regular properties, key value pairs. You can also have key value, value pairs where the value is a function. And so I can call, uh, if I print out person dot get name, it's going to call that function. And this thing is going to return this dot first and this dot last. So if we print this, this should do what you would expect uh, hopefully that's what you expect, uh, where it prints out the first and last. And what this inside of this function refers to is the actual object. So when you're inside of an object and you have a function and inside of that function you call this, it's going to, to refer to that object. Just make sure that was clear. The reason this happens is because regular functions create their own binding to this. So they automatically uh, take the binding of the object that they are inside of in this case. Alternatively, if we define this as an arrow function, oh, sorry, like, and then uh, we don't need the return because we can do an implicit return. So this becomes a little neater, right? It's a little, a little easier to write, a little easier to see, but this is not going to work. See here, we get undefined, undefined. So with an arrow function, it does not bind its own this. Since this, in this case, is not referring to the person object, there is no first and last variables out there uh, that it can reference, so it gets undefined for both of those. So this is probably something you'll need to look into a little bit more, uh, the idea and concept of the keyword this, but just understand the binding of this with an arrow function is different than with a regular function. So long term, uh, probably what you're looking at in terms of usage is I would say use arrow functions by default and then use regular functions if you need them for specific reasons. And typically that reason would be something to do with the this scope and this binding. I do almost all of my functions with arrow functions. I think you'll see more and more material out there using arrow functions. So I think it's a good thing to learn, a good thing to practice and to incorporate in your development workflow. Uh, I do want to leave you with one resource, one that I found uh, really, really helpful. And it's this article on SitePoint, which is EO6, ES6 arrow functions, fat and concise syntax in JavaScript. Some people call these fat arrow functions. I feel a little uncomfortable saying that, honestly. Uh, but it's just another, another name for arrow functions. There's lots of great content in here that you can find uh, to kind of reinforce the things that we just talked about. But in a few minutes, that is a quick intro to arrow functions. I hope this helps you take advantage of some of these modern JavaScript features. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.